Hey everyone, it's Peter, and today we're answering a question that I've always kind of wondered, but I've never really had the chance to answer, and that's, how are Xiaomi phones in the United States on our networks? Now I know there's a very small number that work pretty well, but as a whole, their phones don't typically work on our cellular radios here. Uh, Gearbest hooked me up and they were able to get me a Redmi 4, so thanks for that. And I guess to answer that question in a nutshell, it kind of sucks. But that's not to say that the phone itself is bad. This is actually a really amazing piece of hardware, considering how little you pay for it. I mean, no, the specs aren't top of the line, but again, for under 200 bucks for pretty much every configuration of this phone, this is a lot of phone for, relatively speaking, a little bit of money. And now on paper, this is supposed to work on 3G on Cricut, and that's who I have. I didn't really have a whole lot of luck with it. The connection would cut in and out and it really wasn't very usable. I mean, I can still send texts and stuff like that, but data, not so much. So connectivity wise, the experience kind of sucks. But the actual phone as a whole, at least out of first impression, is a totally different story. This thing feels very solidly built. And I actually don't hate MIUI or MyUI, whatever it's called, nearly as much as I thought. I actually kind of dig it. Yeah, it's a shameless ripoff of iOS, no one's debating that. But it's a really well put together rip. It's actually not too bad of a skin. It's very responsive even on this low end hardware. I've played some games on it, done some basic things, taken a couple pictures here and there. Not ready for full review, but for my first experience with a Xiaomi phone and it being one of the lower end models, I gotta say, I'm a little bit impressed, even a little jealous. The amount of phone you get for the amount of money you're paying here is pretty crazy. Outside of all that, you pick it up and it just feels well built. I mean, it's got a nice heft to it. It's got an over 4,000 milliamp hour battery. And with the hopefully power efficient processor and 720p screen, I'm expecting some pretty crazy battery life out of this. It has all the necessities like a fingerprint scanner, 13 megapixel camera, IR blaster on the top. Yes, a headphone jack as well. It does use micro USB, but considering the money you're paying for this, that's okay if it's not cutting edge and it's not on USB-C, that's fine with me. Speakers are about what I expected for this phone. You know, decent. They'll play YouTube videos and whatever just fine. But as a whole, I didn't expect to get so much phone for such a low price. So we'll see what happens in the full review if any of this changes. I think some of it will because I don't expect such a heavily skinned version of Android to last running this smooth on such low power hardware. But hey, I could be wrong, so we'll see. Now, if there's anything specific you want to see in the full review, please do let me know. I'm all ears for this. Let's experiment. Let's have some fun. This one's for you guys. Make sure you keep up to date on all the social media that I've got. Check the description for all the links. And appreciate you watching. As always, you're the reason I do this. Peter's had an off. See you later.